and welcome to our theater. Our story tonight revolves around a home, a typical one in many ways. A home with a wife, a husband, and a child. Might even be yours. Except that this one is located in one of those wild cow towns which, in the early days of the West, spread across Kansas. The man of the house is the town marshal. Now, although many stories have been told about the courage and fortitude of old-time marshals, how about their wives? Those lonely women who waited at home every night, listening for a shot that might mark them for widowhood. Our story takes a look into the soul of one such woman. On a night that began, like all others for her, in this isolated and lonely house on the edge of town. Hey, Pa, it's five o'clock. Thanks for reminding me. Can I come out and say goodbye? You stay right in bed. Oh, I'd like to ship that clock back to Aunt Ellen, Philadelphia. I thought you loved all that old furniture she sent you. Well, I do, but when it chimes five back there, it just means that everybody has tea. Tom, if, uh, if Billy doesn't feel any better by tomorrow, we better have Dr. Martindale look at him. Heaven knows he's not my idea of a doctor. Maybe not, but he's the best one this town's got. You'd be lucky to get even him. Why? Well, he's been stuck over at that Silver Springs settlement the last few days. Some scarlet fever. Now, with scarlet fever, you get a lot sicker than Billy is. Well, I, I didn't say anything. I know you. Well, I'd better say goodbye to the pride and joy. Pa, I don't feel like eating. Well, if you won't eat it, I will. Go ahead if you want to. <laughs> I'll see you in the morning, son. See you, Pa. If Doc Martindale gets back in town, I'll send him on over. All right, darling. And please take care of yourself, won't you? You always say that as though you expected them to bring me back in a potato sack. Well, I guess I do expect just that. Oh, come on now. After the rough cow towns we've been in the past six years, being peace officer here is like stealing the money. Well, let's not start that again. I wish I could be what you want me to be, but this is the only kind of life I know or want. I never fooled you about that. No, you didn't. And so for six years, we've been following you from one lonely, desolate town to another. But you never give these towns a chance. You never try to make friends. Well, who or... am I supposed to make friends with? I don't understand these people. Well, I'm one of these people. Why, if I hadn't gone to St. Louis on business, we'd never have even met. I know. Oh, I guess it's this house more than anything else. In the other places, I used to be able to look out the door or the window and see what you were up to. But here, I... you go up the hill, cross the tracks, and disappear out of sight. And from then on, I find myself living by the sounds I hear. The cattle will start to quiet down in an hour or so. And then the town will suddenly come to life like a... like a well-fed, vicious alley cat. Well, building the house this far out was your idea. Well, at least we don't have to put up with a lot of drunken cowboys. Oh, I guess I'm just upset about Billy. I know. Well, you needn't worry about me tonight. Because I'm going to spend most of my time looking at the new gals and the pretty green stockings dancing at the Grover house. Well, don't look too hard. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to get that grease at the hardware store tonight for sure. Uh -huh. Where have I heard that before? I'll see you in the morning. Hi, Mr. Jackson. Hi, Tom. Hello, Miss Frazier. Hello. My boy isn't well, and I'd like Dr. Martindale to look at him. Does your mother expect him within the next couple of days? No, mother hasn't had a bad spell in weeks. After a long, active life, not being able to do anything but lie in bed kind of gets you down. Yes, of course. Please tell her I'll try and drop by more often. She'd certainly appreciate that, Miss Frazier. Your throat doesn't hurt at all? Uh-uh. Keep well covered. Tom, what are you doing home this time of night? I came home, that's all. Is anything wrong? No, nothing wrong. Is there any coffee left? Tom, you're keeping something from me. What is it? 
I just decided to come home, that's all. You've never acted like this before. Whatever it is, it must be serious. Now, look, darling, it's nothing that concerns you. Let's not talk about it. Pa, how come you're home, Pa? It ain't morning. That's right. But how come you're not asleep? You feeling all right? Sure. Irene, stay with the boy. Why, what? Mom? Yes, dear? I'm a liar. I kept telling you I feel good. And I don't feel good at all. I know you don't, darling. I'll make you some nice strawberry tea and you'll feel ever so much better. Just tell us straight out what you intend to do. Like I said before, I'm staying here till Jordan leaves town. All right, you're the mayor. It's your responsibility. Every cowhand tending his herd will be riding in to help tear the town apart. The minute they find our peace officer's home hiding under a bed. Now, wait a minute. Afraid to face a man old enough to be his father. You've no right to talk that way to Tom. For over a year now, he's made us feel safe. And don't you forget it. How safe do you feel right this minute, mayor? Tom, what is this? Irene, I asked you to stay with the boy. Harry shouldn't have blown up that way. And I want to apologize for him. I guess Harry's lived through his share of trouble. That's for sure. Once he had to walk behind his murdered brother's coffin on up to Cemetery Hill. Why can't any of you understand? I've given old man Jordan enough trouble. All I'm asking is that you go back and get him out of town. I can't do that. Not without using my gun. Tomorrow the herds move on and Jordan will have to go with him. By tomorrow, all the confidence that the people have in you, the confidence that has kept this town from becoming a jungle, will be dead and buried. Well, think of Jordan's side of it. How he must feel. An old man crazy with grief because he thinks I killed his son. Killed his son? Tom, what is this all about? Well, you remember the trial about five months ago? That wild kid from Texas that shot Joe Turner. Well, you didn't kill that boy. He was given a fair trial. He was hung. He's dead. That's all his father Jordan cares about. And I was the one who caught him. Now he's coming to town yelling an eye for an eye. An eye for an eye. Well, he's just shooting his mouth off. Maybe. But don't fool yourself into thinking that he's a pathetic old man. He's strong and dangerous and armed to the teeth and roaming about our town without anybody to stop him. My clerk came out and told me what happened. I called him a liar. You are going back to town. Not tonight. Well, then, I gotta go to my store. Get the iron shutters out of the basement, see everything's secure. Might take a couple of hours. Miss Frazier? Yes? Could you look in my mother and see she's all right? Yes, of course. Thank you. Listen. Cowhands firing the guns as they ran to town. That's nothing new. Maybe not, Tom, but your place is in town tonight. What about us? What about our son? Or isn't that important? An eye for an eye, that's what Jordan said. A son for a son. Irene. Where else should Tom be but with his wife and child? What do you want for your hundred dollars a month? There are wives and children in town too, Mrs. Fraser. Wait. I'll go with you. Tom! Irene. You leave us? Well, George will stay with you right here in this room. He'll look after you. He's a fine man. Then why can't he go into town? Well, it's, it's Tom they respect, Miss Fraser. With, with me, they just shoot it out. Best man wins. He's right, Mrs. I don't care if it's true or not. It's us he should worry about. Uh, mind if I smoke? If you want to. Well, I could just as well chaw if the smoke bothers you. Do whatever you please. Just sorry this Jordan thing come up, Miss Fraser. Wish I could take care of it for Tom. I know. Wasn't your fault. Of course, ain't no need for you to worry. Tom can take care of herself. Yes. There's a pot of hot coffee on the stove. Help yourself. I'll look in on the boy. Thank you, ma'am. Seems to be sleeping now. Mr. Jackson asked me to look in on his mother. I, uh, 
I guess it's safe enough. Oh, sure. Tom's probably taken old man Jordan's gun away and sent him on out of town by now. Well, why don't you leave the door open, Miss Frazier? Get some fresh air. No, of course not. Your son asked me to drop by and see what you were up to. Dancing an Irish jig and frying half a dozen spring chickens. Well, if there's nothing I can do for you, I'd better be getting back. My son isn't well. You mothers nowadays get all excited if the boy's nose runs a little. We had cholera sweep through us, killing two out of every three. There were new graves dotting all the roadsides and the camping places. I'll drop by again. Now, don't you trouble yourself. If the boy is really sick. But your son said... Well, if I feel a spell coming on, I'll use this. If you hear it. Well, maybe you better drop in on me. There's medicine there. Miss Fraser. What is it? Miss Fraser, you better come quick, ma'am. I hear them gasping for air like that, and I come running for you. We have to have Dr. Martindale right away. Why, he's clear over in Silver Springs, 28 miles away. Then you'll have to go for him. Well, what are you waiting for? Miss Fraser, I don't know. How about old man Jordan? You told me yourself Tom probably already chased him out of town. Well, yes, We but, need the doctor. But you and the boy. Could you use one of these if you had to? Uh, I suppose so. I'll get back just as soon as I can. You better keep the front door locked and all the shutters, too, just to be on the safe side. Miss Fraser. Yes? Shouldn't I go on into town and get Tom? No, you'll be gone for hours as it is. Hurry up. You'll be all right, darling. You'll be well soon. We'll leave here and we'll never come back.
You all finished shooting, lady? Because if you're funny shooting and pounding on my hand, I'd much appreciate your telling Helen that Nate is here and Matt is a hornet. I figured it was Helen was doing all the smashing and shooting. I didn't figure everybody in the Barton house was crazy like her. I could have killed you. That's no lie. Shooting through a door like that. I thought it was someone else. Well, no matter who it is, that's sure a funny way to say howdy. You must be Mrs. Potter. Helen was telling me that she lived with a Mrs. Potter. Mrs. Potter's roaming house is on the other side of town. The other side? You came the wrong way. You mean that Helen doesn't live here? Oh, and I've been pounding your house to pieces for nothing? Oh, I don't blame you for acting up. I have to call my son is sick. Well, sure, lady. And I am awful sorry. Why did you ring? First, the man yelling about how sick your son is, and then that terrible pounding loud enough for God's judgment, and then the gunshots. What is a body supposed to do? Lie here and think about next Sunday's prayer meeting? What's going on here? I haven't time to tell you about it. I've got to get back to my boy. Only your voice. You won't be much use to him. My voice? <laughs> Sound as if you were falling apart. The vapors. That's what a lady is supposed to feel when there's trouble, eh? And then everybody starts running around yelling for the smelling salts. Well, the nearest smelling salts now are Kansas City, and it's a long way off. Too far away if you want to know the truth. I know your kind. Fifty years of safety, a nice funeral, and a respectable cemetery. Don't you know there are things a thousand times better than safety? I've lived through things you'll never know. I wouldn't take one minute of my life for all the safety in the world. I've been part of something that's alive and growing. <laughs> Inside, Mrs. You missed her. When do you expect him? I... Not till tomorrow morning. He'll be home before that when he don't find me in town. He'll be home all right. Then I'll thank him kindly for what he did. Did you ever see my son? No. How did you miss him? They say the whole town turned out for the hanging like it was a public holiday. But you can't blame my husband. Do you know how it feels to have him point to a mound of earth and say, that's your boy, Fred? Do you know how it feels to burn a kid's clothes? <laughs> Who's in there, Mrs.? <laughs> That'll 
kill him, sure. Scarlet fever, ain't it? I heard there was a lot of it around. Keep him like that, he'll be dead before morning. Burning up. It's the fever that makes him die. I know about it. I pulled my own son through it once. So they could hang him. Ten years later. What shall I do? Oh, please. Please help me. Please. How can you hate a suffering child? Get every sheet you've got in the house, soak it in cold water and bring it to me. But that doesn't make any sense. You've got to get his fever down or he'll die. I'll do what you say. You'll be all right, son. You'll be all right. Fever seems to be dying down. I'll be going now. Mr. Jordan, I... I don't know what to say. Well, I'm sorry. I butted in the way I did. I don't know how I figured hurting you people would get my boy back. Thank you. All right, Jordan. Hold it. Tom, no! How's the boy? He's much better. There'll be no shooting here, Jordan. Now get moving. Give him his gun. What? Give him his gun. And then thank him for helping me with our son. Sorry, mister, for all the trouble I caused you. Take good care of that boy, ma'am. Fine-looking lad. I don't understand, Irene. You will, Tom. Come on, I have a nice pot of coffee. All right, I could use it. What a night. What do you want, boy? Fifty years of safety and a nice funeral in a respectable cemetery? What? <laughs> Come on. What's this? Bullet holes. What else? Huh? Oh, come on, I'll tell you all about it. I hope that you enjoyed the story we've told this evening. And now, next week, a change of pace. A light romantic tale by the novelist and screenwriter Michael Blankford about a stern businessman who learns to play a very dangerous game. Our guest star will be the well-known actor of the stage and screen, Mr. Joseph Carton. Until then, good night.